but you're all here, isn't it fantastic? And they managed to put all three demo sessions on at the same time. Isn't that great as well? So um, at least hopefully everyone's seeing demos right now. Um, my name is Shane Delaney. And I'm Drew Chan. Um, I'm, I, I guess, was now a pastor. So I was a teacher at Melbourne High School. I now lecture at the University of Melbourne. Um, I lecture the Master of Teaching in Teacher Candidates. And Drew. And I just teach science and chemistry at MLC. You do a bit more than just teach, Drew. Um, we're, we're both uh, sort of founding members of the uh, Early Careers Chemistry Network, which is the ECCN. Um, we're both sort of a bit ICT focused, a bit um, savvy, and then we've been put in a room where there's just no technology whatsoever. So, that, look at all these fantastic screens, by the way. I mean, yeah. fantastic yeah. building. Nothing works. Nothing works. So, um, we, made, we made some slides just at the start, but thankfully it was only three, four minutes of slides. Just to show you some of the resources that we've sort of started to put together. Um, this session started as a bit of a, um, an attempt by myself and others to sort of get a bit of a, a list of good demos going that we knew weren't just about whiz -bang. I know we had explosions in the title, but sort of we're, we're more than just whiz -bang engagement. Um, we want to actually find some demos that had a bit more focus on like an ob a learning focus. No, I'm not saying a demo is never learning, but so something that had a good observation that you could then talk to and question your students and stuff like that, rather than just simple, um, not simple, but you know, like just simple engagement ones. We wanted something that actually had a learning focus. So we did a big review. I got out all of the old um, Shakespeare books, um, Sumlin books. We got about eight or ten of the old books from the 80s and 90s. And I, I went through them and just found some good ones we liked. We liked. Now, at that um, list that I've just written there, it's got a, it's a bit.ly URL shortener. So it's bit.ly slash ECCN in capitals, demo, not in capitals, stab in capitals. Capital letters do matter. Um, so it's case sensitive, so that's, that's the correct one. And don't put a slash on the end. In that folder, you will find um, my notes from when going through, I just left it as is, my notes from going through the demos, like sort of my topic, what I thought about them, how long they should take. Then a better list of ones that we're actually doing at the University of Melbourne as part of the demonstration assignments, and they're the ones that we've tested and we know they work well. Um, and the slides that we're currently not using. And a link to uh, a YouTube channel which we've just put up in the last week or so, um, that has where the project's going. We've been filming these at um, Melbourne University, and then we've also been filming ourselves, somewhat sporadically. Um, filming ourselves, talking a little bit about the demonstrations, and then like, explaining how to do it, and explaining how to perhaps use it as a, as a teacher. There's only three out there at the moment, but we're slowly sort of getting up, and we're hoping to have you know, several dozen by the end of the year. Okay? Not, is it, so is it? Yeah, the 3G is not working here. It worked for me yesterday. Oh, the internet's not working here. Yeah, we will endeavour to have something going by the end. Yeah, I just checked that before. Yeah, so tell you what, we'll have a crack at it. We'll have a crack at it by um, the end of the session. Now we've got about 11 demos. 10, 10 look like they're going to work. One we're not so sure, but we'll find out. Um, Drew and I are just going to go through them. Uh, I guess. No, we won't talk about them. about them. We'll talk through them. Um, like I said, the slides have some more information, but that's for another day. Should we just start? Which one are we going to start? We're going uh, to start, we're start with red and blue electron trail. Yeah. So, um, this is uh, the red and blue electron trail. It's, uh, it's not that dang. It's basically a jelly. A jelly um, solution that we've added a bit of phenyl failing to um, and some ferrous, ferrous um, and on. so I'm going to turn it on got power on um, I've got just two nails sitting in the solution and it's going to be pretty quick um, so we, we had this as an electrolysis reaction last year and we're hoping that since it's, it's, it's called the red and blue electron trail. Let me fucking slide forward a bit. 
because yep there you go because um, on one we should be forming a blue sort of a, a blue color a blue color which is known as um, Prussian blue Prussian blue no Prussian blue Prussian blue was the, was how this was sort of made not made this way but it's it's the same compound and on the other one we can start to see a bit of pink. Um, we'll just leave that going. Um, you, you, and I put the analysis as far away as possible. The gelatin is basically just allowing the whole thing to go a lot slower. And so we can see it um, a lot more. So this is a fantastic one. My student who did this, Rachel, she's in the room, um, you know, she, she just had that going and then she could just talk about a survey, she could talk about it, she could talk about the reaction, she just spoke to it for five minutes. We found that really nice. So we'll leave that, leave that going for a bit. I'm meant to be kick-starting off with the magnesium sand. So, that's so while that's happening, I'll talk about the magnesium and sand demonstration. Um, when I first saw this, I was really amazed by it because you know I've never seen a reaction like it. Um, it's basically a mixture of let me see, I've got seven and a half grams of silica sand and five grams of magnesium powder. And uh, basically what we're going to do is quite a spectacular redox reaction, uh, basically using magnesium to reduce the silica to silicon. Uh, it does take a little while, and um, this is a meter burn just to get a higher temperature, but I've done it at, at, at school, and I've used a normal Bunsen burner, it will work just as well. Um, so let's get that started. It does take a little while to get going because, yes. How small does the magnesium have to be for this to actually work for the magnesium power to actually be now for the secondary source? It's, um, hard, it's hard to source. Um, it's not in bands. It's not in bands. Last time I checked the list, I checked the list last week. Um, DEC. Uh, the DECD um, website has a large amount of information as to the fairly short list of chemicals that are banned in schools, um, in Victorian schools, Victorian education schools, by the type of, and magnesium powder was not on the list. So I agree. My lab tech told me that it was incredibly hard to source nowadays um, in a setting. It's getting hard. And it's getting hard, but it's not banned. Yeah. I'm sure you, I, I, we're not experts in law, but. Last time I checked, the Department of Education and Early Childhood, the D's, the development one, I think, yeah, the development, they had um, a list, the, the website's quite good, there's guideline sheets you can go through, there's one about how to store things, there's one about what's banned, there's one about what's you know, prohibited and such. That, that magnesium powder was not on the list. Yeah. That, that was on the list, the one that just happened. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not using really fine powder, I think this, this, this powder is about the same size as the sand grain. So that's roughly where we're looking at. Um, you probably need to use a, you can't just use any old test tube, you need to use a Pyrex test tube that can withstand the, the high temperatures. Um, obviously you don't want your test tube blowing up on you while, whilst doing this demonstration. Should we just um, that yeah. Look, it's heating up, it does take a little while. Um, it might make a pop sound when it gets hot enough, so just be aware of that if you are a bit scared of sudden noises. Um, <laughs> But you know, just let it heat up, and we'll show you another demo whilst that's yeah, heating so up. So it might go for five minutes or so. Um, and you can mention that right? sometimes if you wait too long, you can throw some magnesium strips in the top. You just ignite this magnesium. Yeah, if you're you adventurous, you need to kickstart the reaction, light some magnesium, <laughs> throw it in. Your choice. Your choice. Um, this is the Cartesian diver. Nice simple one. Have you ever seen this one before? Um, it's just uh, full of water, and. It's, I've just, we've just cut off a bit of plastic past to prepare. I'll just, you, you watch that, I'll, I'll watch this. Um, and on all we do, and I put a bit of blue tack around it just to sort of give it a bit more weight. And the trick is... Tell me we've this partly filled the past to prepare with water. So it's mostly, and there's a little bit of air in there. And if I squeeze... Yeah. Can you see that? So if I squeeze it... goes down. I'll let go. Comes back up. I could watch this all day. Um, you know, and if you do it really careful, Patrick's, Patrick's quite good at this one. He can sort of sit there, look at that. 
to hold it. Run the middle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's really simple, just a nice, um, quick one thinking about um, pressure, pressure and, volume. and volume. And so I, I, we just found that sensational. Just a real, if anyone wants to just have a quick, you can hand that one around if yeah, you want. Pass it around and play with it. That's just water. Um, this one I found in a book. No, it's still not. Um, this one we found in a book. It's um, in the book. It was called the non-polar disc game. Um, it's, I guess, it's sort of almost a bit like a student activity in the sense that this is just some um, some index cards and cardboard that we've written on grey lead on the back of it. So on one side, it's, we try to deposit as much uh, graphite as possible, and in here, I've got uh, 100 mils of water and 100 mils of hexane. Now, um, it could have been anything non-polar. In fact, in the book, it said to use Try chloro, try something ethane. Anyway, we didn't we didn't bother trying to look for that. So um, just anything non-polar. In fact, my, my lab tech originally put this out as cyclohexane, but hexane would also work, we hope. And all it's going to be. And so look, you could sit this and oh, that's a pretty small one. You could sit this and shake it, and so show that sure you can shake it, um, but they do eventually settle back into two layers. And then what would you do? I knew I got this. Pour these in. And you, you know, it's become a bit of a predict. You know, what do you think is going to happen, students? You know, um, surely if I randomly shake this to death, um, you know, they're just going to go everywhere. Well, I think the trick is, I love standing next to something that's about to explode. Um, the trick is that all of the um, bits of the graphite are going to line up one way. Now, it's just one of those great little ones that, much like the Cartesian diver, it's just. It's playing to that sort of cognitive conflict angle that sort of the students are sort of expecting that if you roll a dice, you know, you're going to get random numbers. Well, this one, there's no random here at all. You know, I can sit this, I can shake it, I'll turn it upside down whatsoever. The graphites are going to keep turning up, up the right way. And so you can always talk to your students about well, why is this happening, you know, what's happening on the surface for that to be happening. So again, that's a pretty simple one. Still waiting on that one. What's next? Um, you've got the acid in water puzzle. Oh yeah, that's in the cool room. Do you want us to go to the next one? Or I'll go get there. Right. Sure. All right. Um, I'm really worried that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Um, this is one that I I do for when I talk about um, endothermic and exothermic reactions. So it's probably you know unit four when you start talking about energy. Um, and it's a demonstration where it's uh, ca uh, calcium oxide. Uh, we've got about 15 grams of it. And people, you know, it looks pretty, you know, innocuous. It's just a white powder. It doesn't look harmful at all. Um, but then, make sure I've got my infrared thermometer ready. How do I do this? <laughs> I've never used it for a longer. Yeah, it's just... Well, there you go. And so it's about 15 grams of calcium oxide powder. Um, I'm going to add some water. So I've got about 10, 20 mils of water. Uh, give it a really good mix. Fill it forms of powder. And hopefully, I didn't have too much water. And it's saying it's 34. So you think, yeah, just mix a powder with water. Pretty innocent. And it's, it takes a little while. <laughs> um, maybe added too much water. Because it didn't have a measuring cylinder. Put some more powder in. Oh, I've used, all, I've used all my powder. Give it a bit of time. It's slowly going up. It's, it's gone up to 40 now. We'll give that some time. Seamus is really heating that magnesium and sand. I it's close. It's close? It's always worked for me in the park. So of course, demos. Yeah, I'll tell the story now. So I got a, I got a um, teacher came back to class. Christina, Christina, are you here? I'm just so bright chemistry. She, I was talking about 
to choose the interview. She was fantastic, but she was so terrified. And I got her to do this one. And we're like, oh, come on, we've been waiting too long. Throw to my meeting. She's like, no. But I look at that joke. Well, my, my one's starting to steam now. Yeah. Okay, you can see a bit of steam coming off. So it's quite, an, it's, it's quite an impressive little reaction because you think it's a powder and water, and yet, um, it's, so it's a reaction between calcium oxide and water to produce um, quicklime, which is um, calcium hydroxide. So you can see it's really steaming now. It's got up to 93 degrees. So yeah, it's, it's quite a great little reaction to do when you're introducing um, um, endo and exothermic reactions. Um, another one, you can, when you're doing this, you could pair, pair it with another one, which is called the chemical ice block. And that one is a reaction between powdered um, barium hydroxide and powdered ammonium nitrate. There we go, there we go. There we go. There we go. So you see it's glowing red hot. Um, the students get really impressed and they go, ooh, it's gone red. So it's really hot. Um, I, took the, I took the heat away a little bit earlier. You could sort of go all the way at the top and then sort of the, the whole thing go. Um, turn that off, that's fine. I'll stroke. There's one that's broken. I broke, broke my back. So oh, oh, we broke my um, I've done this a couple of times now, and we've kept the tube, and so this is often when I get these out. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So go around, and that's sort of the, the end result. You let it cool down in about 10 minutes, you'll get that. You're not going to get a perfect sort of mirror, as you might think of the silicon, but you'll get a nice sort of a glossy, bubbly sort of um, And it's just sort of, again, it's, it's, it's taking something that the students just don't get to really see, you know, the idea of silicon, and it's made just from sand and so when you're doing the redox, you know, that's where you're, you're pulling out, you know, what's been oxidized, what's been reduced, maybe talk about oxidation numbers, how have oxidation numbers changed. And, you know, it's a great little it's a great spectacular reaction to show your students and introduce them to, to redox and all those redox concepts. So um, this one is again it was it was called in the book the acid and water puzzle. Um, the idea is, is I've got water that I've just, they had a cool room here. I was out in a cool room just then. Um, and there's water in that. And then there's the ice bag. The ice is in there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Excuse. And then I'm going to have one that just one that just dies. Shavis, I'm going to pass these around so people can have a look. Yeah, absolutely. Break all my chip. Um, so this is our nine molar sulfuric acid. So quite strong. We sort of made it the day before. Obviously, just um, give it plenty of time to. Cool down. And so I've got water. I'm going to get my digital thermometer. Yep. And again, for the benefit of the people in the front, we've got, so yes, the ice is bloody cold and the water is bloody cold as well. No trick to it, yeah? Yeah, five degrees, close enough. Um, I'm going to pour some sulfuric acid into the water. So, you know, POE, what do you think is going to happen, students? And no great surprise on that one. They're probably going to be okay with that. It's going to heat up, and you know, again, if we added ice cold water, uh, ice cold sulfuric acid, um, so they're both at that sort of two, three degrees. It's going to it's going to shoot up. And so again, you see the roll of water, and, and you think that's no great surprise. The acid will increase the temperature. The puzzle is now. This is not going to work. It's not ice cold. Anyway, the puzzle is. You pour this into the ice, and the temperature is going to go down. Now, 
now. So you've just shown the students that adding the acid to the water makes the temperature go up. And so adding the, adding the, the strong acid to the ice makes the temperature go down. In fact, if it's going to go all the way down, it won't because that wasn't cold enough, but it's going to go all the way down to about negative 10, negative 11 degrees. And so students have got that crux of thinking, well then, okay, now what to think about. That, that comes in the next 15 minutes, talking about um, latent heats and talking about um, uh, impurities and, and such. And it, it turns into a good conversation. It sort of, we timed it well, sort of early, you know, second to third week of you know, two, that sort of time when you're just having those graphs and you're having that idea of, of energy and so that sort of went really well. I think I've, I'm not showing you the temperature because it's, I've had to cheat. That's, um, I put it, should have put that in the fridge too. It I is going down. Water. It's going down. I can confirm it's going down. He, he my co-presenter, who would never lie, is <laughs> at point two going down. Point two. Oh, there you go. So, uh, it did work. Again, obviously, Concentrated sulfuric acid, but other than that, it's a fairly innocuous safe, and, and it's a great one that they'd expect apart from the night of sulfuric acid. Um, it's it's one that they'd certainly expect um, a result, and they don't get that result. So it challenges them to think through um, their answer. What do we got left? Um, we got the. Well, you might want to talk now that you've got oh, the really clear result um, there now. So there's our. Hold up, it's right. Okay. There you go, that's our um, a red and blue electron trail. Like I said, it's, it's a good time then to say that all of the information as to where to find the instructions for these are, are in those, um, that folder. Um, we will, as soon as I get a chance to check some internet, I'll see what the problem is. Um, but there you go. Now I can also pull these out and show as well to the students that. Really carefully. There you go, nothing, nothing taken with the nails whatsoever. So, nice, nice simple one. Can we talk about the actual chemistry behind it? Because that's what these people are here for. <laughs> We're putting you on the spot. You are putting me on the spot. Um, well, what's the phenyl failing you can indicate, I suppose? So, hence the phenyl failing. And the other one that went in was the ferrous, yeah. ferrous cyanate, um, which is going to give us that the blue complex. The, the chemistry behind that, I think, was quite more coordination. So essentially, it's yeah. So it wasn't quite this year, <coughs> but it was. It was um. I think it's the the iron getting oxidised causes the blue to form, and then on the other end, you're reducing water to produce hydroxide, which causes the pink to form. So that's the chemistry behind uh, this one. I'm happy with that. That's all you need. He's the one, he's That's the one, all you need. He's the one who does the explanation, I just look at it. <laughs> a lot of the year 11 do that, but not the electrons oh. part of the agar. Yeah, 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 if we do it, yeah, where you just yeah. bend, a, bend a nail in half yeah. and then you yeah. see that, but it just takes, you know, a few days to occur. Mm. And you can pair well, that, that with... That's fairly as well, oh. if it's over another period. You yeah. Can't yeah, and you can pair that with then, um, you know, having magnesium wrapped around it and showing kind of sacrificial protection, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what's next? We got. Uh, you've got your magnesium and, and, uh, oh, and ice. Yeah. In, Let's try it. In ice. It hasn't been working again, but we'll give it a go. Um, I'll take this heat map. And I've got this one after you. Um, I'll look at this one. Who does this one? Magnesium and dry ice block. Oh, okay. Um, the another guy that we sort of really like is um, Scottish. Who's tall? Teaching fellow. Peter Worthers. No. no. He's nice too. <laughs> um, the education in chemistry. Have you been on the Royal Society of Chemistry site? And the education in chemistry, every two months they put up a video. Declan Fleming. Declan oh, Fleming is his name. Yeah. Um, and he puts up a video every two months, sort of talking through in really good detail, but still, you know, five, six minute videos of how to do certain demonstrations, how to use it as a teacher. What I really like about those ones is it's not just even is fantastic. It's like he's talking about it as a teacher and explaining how you use it in class. Um, the he, the magnesium and the dry ice. I picked up some dry ice on the way this morning. So I'll put my gloves back on. I time this demo with the students when I'm talking about safety, which would probably you wouldn't do this one, but. 
Um, so I've cut it. Um, you can get little one. These are one little one kilogram blocks that you actually can get from Melbourne Uni. You can just walk in off the street. They're um, they're six dollars sixty. Don't break it. Um, the guy's name's Joe. Joe Tyler. Six dollars <laughs> sixty. Sam that sounds really dodgy, doesn't it? Um, six dollars sixty at the chemistry store. And um, it's like a one kilogram block. It's not that big. I've obviously seen much bigger ones. But the, um, it's been a long time, hasn't it, Tom? You're just laughing at everything. The, I, I've cut it, just cut it with a little, um, with a little hacksaw or knife, blade. And then I've dug about a good three, four centimetre. I've, I've been told five centimetres is enough. But because I was worried the thin, the thinness of this block, I've only gone about four centimetres down. So hopefully it works. But you've got to get down a long way, obviously, because we're trying to avoid, we're trying to want magnesium plus CO2 to react, we don't want magnesium in the So I'm just going <laughs> And it's as simple as, let me get that in the back one. Oh, yeah. um, it's as simple as um, that half filling the cavity. So what I, I should explain. So I just cut it and then I used like a little um, like a spoon, uh, just a spatula to sort of dig slowly on my way down. And then I'm going to pour the magnesium turnings at about halfway. Um, so it's about two grams, not even two grams, I think. And there's no hurry at this point. <coughs> Obviously, no hurry until I. Should we grab the, um, the, the brulee torch? Yeah, which doesn't have any gas. <laughs> <laughs> Went to Bunnings, bought one. I uh, thought, oh, this is really good, says I like this much about. Um, and it says it's got everything in it. And it's got like two different types of, two different types of um, butane gas lighters. And it does say supply empty, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> had it, Greg. Um, yeah, I didn't get one that had. I can't even lie to you. You're just going to have to do it closer to the. What, you know what I'm thinking of doing? I'm thinking of lifting it out and then putting it back in. Does that sound dangerous? That sounds One more
So as you can see, probably did need to go a little bit further because it did react a bit quick. But there you go, so there's that nice glow. If I, I think, if I went maybe a centimetre lower, that would have still been going. It goes for a good two, three minutes. Um, did go a bit quick, unfortunately, and that's going to be bugger plenty. But anyway, we'll get to that. Go deep. Go deep. <laughs> Go to the Melbourne Uni Ken store and buy it. Six dollars, six is six, Joe. Just, 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 just turn up and buy it. Back out of the There's no secret handshake ever. You still want um, Boiling water? Um, yeah. Boiling empty of out. Should we try it? Yeah, yeah. So this is, um, I guess this is, um, we're going to try and boil acetone at um, room temperature. Um, and we're also going to try to show that evaporation, boiling, is an endothermic process. So if it's an endothermic process, what do you expect to see with the temperature as it begins to boil? It's this way. This is way. I'll tell you what, I think we'll give this one a miss. Um, <laughs> I can try and hold it there for you. No, it's actually this bit here. You can see like we've, we've power filmed it, we've rubber taped it, we've done everything to get that one on. Um, that's all we have. Is that a good option? Oh, I've heard from that as well. You see trying to spurt out. I'll just talk to this one. Um, so, it looks, obviously, we, we were somewhat limited with what we had. We just sort of found this. The, we, we needed a three-way stopcock so we could um, introduce air back in, but it's as simple as, as this, it, it's very similar to that one you'll see in a second. Um, well, it's as simple as just acetone in there, and what we're going to do is we're going to evacuate the pressure above, uh, the atmosphere above. Now that's going to obviously reduce pressure inside, and as you're doing it's unit two, it's gases, you're going to see a drop in the temperature uh, that the, the acetone would boil. Now, so much so, in fact, that if you do it at the same, if you do it just after that one, like that one gets in, and Jules showed in a second, but this is sort of like, okay, they sort of, oh, it's boiling, that's interesting, but it's boiling, and then the temperature starts going down. Um, and so you've got your little thermometer. I did, I did it um, last year, actually, with a thermometer in there, but because you couldn't really move it, um, it sort of got a bit pointless. But, so a good digital thermometer was good for it. And the water is boiling away, boiling away, and the temperature just keeps going down and down and down and down. And so that fantastic idea of sort of hang a tick, that's boiling. There is clearly something going on there, but all it is is simply showing that evaporation is actually an endothermic process. Mm. And so that was a really nice one to talk to. And um, you talk about, well, okay, the, the ones that have got the extra energy, they're the ones that sort of, I always talk about, you know, um, water molecules, or in this case, acetone molecules, you know, pushing through and breaking through and having enough energy to escape. But then what's left is the poor souls that didn't have enough energy and they've got, they've got the temperatures lower and so on. And so that was a really nice one to talk to. Again, not what they're expecting to see. At the same time, it's this one. Can right. I do this one? I'll show you. Yeah. I think Seamus is the expert at this one. So this one is boiling at reduced pressure. So we've got some water that was boiled in the kettle, pop a few boiling chips in there. And what is the, a third fill? Yeah. Third fill. Not too hot. You've got the gloves on, might be better. Oh. We're gonna hit we're gonna hit it further. Yeah. Well we, we want to get this piping high. So maybe I should take yeah, that, take that off now. Take that off. Don't want that happening. You've got the gloves on, so oh, it's near bartender. I don't feel things in my hand anymore. So it's true, there's do we still have that video of you heating stuff with no gloves on? Hey, it worked. That was the first time I got the ammonia pound to work with. 
Um, so what we're going to do is there should be two O-rings actually. Do you want another O-ring? Yes, please. Um, what do you want me to pop the other O-ring? Just to hold it at the top so I don't have to. Is that going to fit? Um, now all we're doing is we're just getting it really, really hot. Um, it's as simple as that. Probably not that low. Yeah. Um, and I want to, so often, now if you've seen this on before, um, is anyone seen this on before? Okay. Um, it's, we've, we've put the video up for this one. This is one of the three that we've actually filmed and put the teacher edition video up. Um, so we're, all we're doing is we're just re-boiling the water, getting, obviously the kettle helps so you're not standing here all day. Um, getting it nice and bubbling away, bubbling away, because I, I want as much vapour up here as possible. I really don't want any, any air. I'm trying to get as just, just water vapour as best I can. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to do something that um, my lab tech doesn't like me doing, is I'm going to take off the heat. Like I said, I, I, it needs about a minute. Um, so what's in there? Oh, that's the ice pack. That's your ice pack um, that you'll need. So, well, there you go, it's starting, it's starting to vaporise now. I don't normally do it with boiling chips, but I've just seen a video recently where someone heated something without boiling chips, so I doubt I now do put boiling chips in there. Um, and when we're sort of sufficiently happy that it's probably boiled enough, I'm going to quickly take the heat off. Maybe you want to get that one going and then um, yeah, do that one. Do the, do the can. Do the can? No, yeah, why not? We only got two no, going. I don't want to distract people from your one. Well, we've got a, com a competitive exploder over there. <laughs> I hear an explosion every 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, no, it's looking good. No, work. let's go. So I'm going to take the heat off. And I'm left handed. I'm just going to take it off, tape it up, now, this is actually a Taping is really important, you don't want your water spilling out everywhere. Um, some people recommend um, maybe using some clear tape over the round bottom flask just in case um, it cracks or anything like that. But it's okay just with taping the, the top. Okay. So. <laughs> there we go. It's coming off. Is that too low? Students, what do you think is going to happen? And put the ice bag on top. Have we got enough vapor? I think it went to ruin. No, I'm not going to ruin the illusion. Do the chemical can. I'll, I'll keep here. Okay. It's never not worked. <laughs> well, if you ever want to. This is a demo that you do um, when students ask you when are we going to blow stuff up from chemistry. Um, they always ask that, particularly the boys, I'm sure. Um, all it is is uh, a Milo tin, and uh, there's a hole cut into the bottom and a hole cut into the top. Um, you can also, uh, the one that we use at work has one that's cut into the side. Um, you just need some rubber tubing. And we are going to fill this tin with some gas, maybe about 30 seconds filled with gas.
All right, so it's filled with gas. It should be now gas coming out the top. I would stand back. <laughs> Um, when doing this, note how I look up. Um, that's because you don't want to um, damage anything on the roof. Hopefully, we won't damage the roof today. So you can see the flames getting bluer, it's getting shorter. It's really good. You can add a bit of theatre to it because you think, oh, is it still happening? I don't know if it's going to happen. You walk away, pretend that you know it's not going to work. Um, the students kind of get lulled into a false sense of security, and I think there's still a flame there. And a little head pops up and check. Just <laughs> yeah. And there you go. It's a beautiful exploding pan. So again, you could use that one um, when talking about carbon chemistry, combustion reactions. Uh, you could also use it when you're talking about stoichiometry, um, talking about um, stoichiometric ratios, because um, you get that pop when you get the right mixture of methane and oxygen, and you get that big explosion. So yeah, great experiment to, you know, chemistry teachers add the theatre to, to demonstrations, so, um, and scare your students. 